I was 15 when I got pregnant and I didn't really know how to feel about it, apart from cry. Come on, can you feed her? Don't want to be bringing up another child. Sometimes I feel like I've just stolen her from the hospital or something. You can't be asked with your baby. I'm a teenager, Mum, what do you expect? Shake right at me. Tony is sticking her head in the sand at the moment, thinking it's all going to go away. Sixteen-year-old single mum Tony lives in a two-bed flat in Farnborough with mum Rachel, stepdad Paul and one-week-old baby Lola. It's a bit weird having a kid, only being a kid yourself. I was drunk, I had sex, well, I didn't even plan to get pregnant. I was a little bit disappointed when I found out she was pregnant because, you know, she said she was using contraceptives and it was just a slip-up. Well. Whether I believe that or not, I don't know. I don't regret anything that happened, cos if I did, then I wouldn't have the most beautiful daughter ever. It's weird how something so perfect could come out of someone like me. <laughs> well, before I got pregnant, I was getting into a lot of trouble with the police, always getting drunk, causing mayhem everywhere. I was on tag for a month, but I'm still on a supervision order. Antonia was a misfit child growing up as a teenager. She was always out till all hours, didn't do as she told, rebelled against everything, got into trouble when there was trouble to be got into. Well, if I didn't buck up my ideas, I would have been going juvie. But now that I've had Lola, she's made me think about going to college and university and getting a job. Oh, Lola. Oh. Blech. Although Tony is trying to turn her life around, she still needs a lot of support. Oh, Mum, I can't get over it over her head. I can't do it someplace. I do something like that. And then you put it under the chin, over her head. I need my mum, only because she's been there, done it. And obviously, I'm still only a kid myself. She's her mum. She, she should have a natural instinct, but she's just scared that she's not going to do it right. Sometimes it makes me want to cry when she's crying, and I don't know what she's crying about. Oh, it's heartbreaking. I don't know what to do. Because you don't know what's wrong with her, you can't talk to her and she can't talk back. Well, I'm kind of hoping Tani sorts her life out. And I'm glad that she's become a mother and it's changed her for the better. I was worried that it wouldn't and I would be left holding the baby. That I've had my kids, so I don't want to be bringing up another child. It's still a bit weird waking up knowing you've got a baby and you've got to look after the baby as well as yourself. It is a bit hard. Baby Lola is now four weeks old and Tony is finding it hard to adjust. You have a nice, clean, fresh one. You can burp, though. Why? Because I don't want sick all over me. I'll just wash my hair. Lazy sod. Tony won't be able to rely on her mum forever. With space in the two-bedroom flat limited, Rachel wants Tony and Lola to move into a mother and baby unit. There's not enough room in the flat for Lola to grow up here. I don't really want to, cos I feel a bit lost without my mum, if I move out. She's a bit anti I think she's scared about moving out and being by herself. Uh, Tony's not confident yet, not confident enough to be by herself with Lola. She still needs a lot of help. I'm not going to make her move out until she's left school anyway, and Lola's going to be six months then, so she should be a dab hand at being a mum by it at that point. You've got to think about your options and what's best for Lola. Yeah, but what options are you giving me then? Live here or on the streets? No, it's a mother. You're kicking me out. I'm not kicking you out. You are out. kicking me out. I'm not well, kicking I'm not moving out. out. I'm not choosing to leave. Choosing to you leave. You can't live here. It's not fair on Lola. Moving L out. Lola. Lola needs her own room. No, because I'm not going into a mother baby unit and my friends are not going to come round. She needs to be able to look after herself, really. Although I'm always going to be here for her. But I can't be there 24 7 for her. No, I don't want to move out. Because I'll then I'll be on my own with a baby. And I'm quite happy living at home. After her pregnancy, Tony has been enjoying getting out again. Today she is visiting her best friend, Amber. Sick of me. 
I did think Tony would end up pregnant at a young age. But then again, I thought I would as well. I, I wouldn't want a kid at this age, though. I thought it was a bit weird seeing her with a baby bump instead of a bottle of alcohol <laughs> and a fag. I think if Tony had the choice, she wouldn't have had a baby so young. She said that if she could go back, she probably wouldn't have had a kid, but she said that she wouldn't change Lola for the world and she wouldn't give up Lola for the world. What are you doing tonight, anyway? I know I'm drinking. Whatever you're doing, I'm tagging along, because I've got no plans. Yeah, if you want. She might want burping, you know. Uh, that's Mummy's job. She won't be sick on you. Ah, uh, no, that's Mummy's she job. She won't be sick on you, as long as you've got the muzzy. Sit her up like hey, that. it's Mummy's job. Sit her up like that. I can't do it, because I feel like I'm going to hurt her. Shut up, they're not made of glass. It's the next day, and Rachel is worried that Tony's past is rearing its ugly head. Tony came home late last night. I feel dead. Stop burning the candles at both ends and start becoming a mother and staying in. It's quite frustrating because, you know, I was really motherly when I had my babies, and she's just not that interested, which is quite heartbreaking. Can you feed her? As well as Rachel being concerned about Tony's parenting, her school attendance has dropped too, adding fuel to the fire. Are there any bottles made? Hello. You're so good, isn't you? Go make a ball. I'm eating. I thought that's what you were doing. Yeah. Tony's just interested in being with her mates and socialising and being on her phone and doesn't seem to pay much attention to Lola. I've spoken to Tony about it. She says there's nothing wrong. Well, probably going out is probably keeping me, like, a lot happier and everything, <laughs> knowing that I can still go out, even if I've got a kid. Well, I'm trying to talk her into going down to the doctors and going and seeing and getting some help or something, cos I don't know if it's cos she's got baby blues or she just can't be asked. I don't think she's got postnatal depression or whatever it's called, but I don't even know what it is, so I don't think I've got it. <laughs> Baby Lola is now six weeks old. Tony's problems have got worse, and suspecting she may have postnatal depression, Rachel wants her to seek help. It's not something I want to talk to about. The doctor might be able to help you. Help me with what? I'm fine. Fine with attitude. Yeah. I'm a teenager, Mum. What do you expect? I expect you to grow up and become a mother. I you chose to have a baby. Shake your head at me. If you don't do anything about your baby blues, Tony, then it'll only get worse. And worse. I haven't got baby blues. And worse. I haven't got baby blues. And worse. I haven't got baby blues. And worse. You can't be arsed with your baby. I can, I just can't be arsed with you going on in the ear all 24-7. I think I need a little bit of help. Sometimes I feel depressed and sad. Sometimes I don't, I don't believe it's real. I don't believe she's mine. Sometimes I feel like I've just stolen her from the hospital or something. But, no, she's mine. <laughs> I just still feel like I'm a teenage girl who wants to go out. Eventually, Rachel gets Tony to go to the doctors. Uh, when Tony went to the doctors, um, the doctor said she hadn't got baby blues, wasn't postnatal depression. It was a case of... It was the shock of becoming a mother. What a crock of poo that was. <laughs> at all now. It's Friday night and Tony and best friend Amber are getting ready to go out. What's she crying for? Oh, I don't know. I'm not psychic. Has she had a bottle? Can you go try feeding her? No. Oh, she's done a little bottle of no. Libby. <laughs> I think she's having a bit of trouble bonding a little bit, but... It's a lot to take in at 16, really, isn't it? 
I get excited during the week just knowing that I'm, I'm going out on the weekend so I don't actually have to look after a baby for the night. So like she's still trying to live her life like she used to and she's sort of realising day by day that she can't. What are you crying for? I fed you, I've burped you. Maybe you need changing. Tony! This time, Mum Rachel can't babysit, so Tony's asked Amber's family to step in. Hello, Lowly. There's yeah. another blanket just in case she gets cold. Oh, okay. Right, are you coming back to get Lola or is she with us for the night? She's with us for the night. Okay. Right. Right, have a good night, girls. And I'll see bye you tomorrow. Bye bye. <laughs> The next day and after her night out, Tony hasn't picked up her daughter. Your mummy's still in bed. She's lazy, isn't she? Yeah. Mummy, where are you? Yeah, voice smile. <laughs> Tony's in bed. Lola's in the living room. Tony can't bother to come get her yet. I think we're going to have her here for at least another hour. I enjoy looking after Lola. It's just, I feel like. Tony just kind of pushes her onto other people because she doesn't know how to cope with it. <laughs> Tony never picked up Lola. Amber's sister had to deliver her back to her mum. In order to get Tony to behave, Rachel has imposed a 10 pm curfew, but Tony's repeatedly broken it. Can't play peekaboo unless you're in front of her and she can see you. Well, she can't see nothing anyway. She can. She sees everything. Tony's made made me flip my lid finally. I've had enough of her. We had her falling out because apparently I'm always palming off my daughter to everyone, and I've got she gave me a 28 day eviction letter not to go to the council. Tony just seems to want to dump the baby and not be anywhere near her. And she finally admitted to me that she's not bonded with her. But I just think it's more a case that she's just more interested in going out rather than staying in with her. I mean, you all have an active baby and quite a quite boring baby. Babies aren't boring. They are. They're just... I, can't, I want her to be a toddler when you actually play with her. As if I just laying there. I still want my freedom which I'm still getting, just not as much as what I'd like. Because it is hard from going from a 16-year-old normal kid to now a 16-year-old mum. I just want to little, just remember how, what my life used to be like. Tony had just been the same as she stayed here. You know, I just don't think she would move on from it. It's like, I just think the best thing for her is to go out and have her own place and see just how bloody hard it is. Rachel had given Tony the option to stay at home for six months if she followed house rules. Quite happy I'm moving out, to be fair. Cos then I won't get told what I can and can't do in a house. Rules are just pathetic. It's a struggle for me, kicking Tony and Lola out, cos I, I do want them here with me. But the only way to solve it is for her to go, and I will be gutted. It's 24 hours before Tony has to move out. She's still breaking house rules and spending even less time at home with her daughter. Mum Rachel wants to find a solution. Mm -hmm. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. One minute you tell me you want me to have Lola, next minute you want her. You need to make up your mind on what you're doing. You're just more interested in going out, aren't you? Yes. Um, a lot's been going on with Tony. She decided she didn't want Lola and I was going to have Lola. And then she's decided, actually, she doesn't want to lose Lola, so I'd, we've just got to try and, find, try and find her somewhere to live. Yeah. Tony is very much sticking her head in the sand at the moment, um, thinking it's all going to go away, I think. But, you know, her easiest option is to sort her life out and stay at home. But she's just not willing to do that. We need to sort something out pretty goddamn quick. I don't want you to be a mum. Yeah, well, you need to make a bit more of an effort of being a mother then, don't you, really? And stop wanting to go out 
and be home at a sensible time and get your baby bathed and fed and get her bottles done and do your washing and keep your bedroom tidy. Go to school, get an education and do things the right way then, don't you? She's not grown up enough to look after someone else at the moment. It's all just dawned on her that mother, being a mother isn't that easy. It's the day of the move, and Rachel is waiting to hear where Tony and Lola will be housed. Well, I don't want my life disrupted by it, no. Sorry. <laughs> it's not fair on me. The social worker just rang me, and they're not happy to put Tony in a bed and breakfast with Lola, so they would rather Lola stay here with me and Tony go into bed and breakfast till they find her a, a supported housing unit. Tony is moving into a foster placement without Lola. You got your front door key? I think so, why? Because I want it back. No. Uh, yeah? No. Yes? No. Try and make this work, Tony, and be sensible. Hey? I don't want to be old, and if they're nasty well, dogs, don't, I'm going to kick them in the Don't bugger it up, Tony, otherwise you bugger it up for yourself and Lola and you'll end up losing her. All right? You need to think about it. They find you somewhere. Right? I don't want to be here. Well, this was your choice. I shouldn't be that such a little sh should you? Hey. If you had to have her back soon, 